I like where your head's at. Um, we it's always, under here. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where your head's at, but <laughs> I, I like it. Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. I am Spencer Cardia. I am Susan B. Anthony. Susan B. Anthony, I know her. And this here is Frank, looking very fashionable in the, the vest. I've never worn a vest, like ever. Wear it. Maybe I should. Just wear it right now. It's too nice out. I'm wearing a t-shirt. Wear it. Wear it. Do it. Wear this it. list is getting crazy, first, guys. First time you want to wear it. It's reversible. A, so. Oh, I'm, no, I can't do red and red. Okay. Guys, you are witnessing live on air the first time I've ever worn a vest. Wardrobe change. Now, my question's always been, how do you, vests... You, you would probably want yours smaller. How do vests keep you warm? Oh, because they protect your core. But, like, does it actually work? Yeah, of course. Like, it, like you know, it's like the, the preppy look. <laughs> look at my little shorts. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's too big. It's tickling my neck. <laughs> I kind of like it, guys. You can roll down the collar like Frank had it. Oh, okay. You know, so you don't feel tickled. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, you just witnessed history. I am wearing a vest on this beautiful Friday. And he's going to break it. Um, All right. Just, you know, like, you know, you pull up your sleeves or you wear short sleeves. It, it, it's meaning your arms can be out. And um, as long as your core is warm, you know, you can wear shorts in the, in the. I feel like I'm like a. Winter. <laughs> Like a farmer or something. I know. Well, I didn't. Oh, uh, this looked better if it was on the plaid side, with the no sleeves. Oh yeah. But I'm not, I didn't I'm not doing mean. Another wardrobe I change. didn't mean. So roll your, your sleeves. Up. Set, pull your sleeves up. I know. I was telling you. You said you don't understand how only a vest would keep you warm, and I said why? People roll their sleeves up. Yeah, I guess so. But you just see people like on a winter, like oh, I'm gonna throw my vest on, and it's like, aren't your arms cold? Oh, it's just like putting a hat on, and and you and you have on a t-shirt. It's like it warms an important um, place. Yeah. I feel like my body's never really cold. It's always the extremities that I worry about. Like, I feel like not Isn't wearing... that why your extremities get cold? Because your core is getting cold? Mm, no. Yes and no. I mean, I think it's a low... Your heart, you know, is pumping blood, and that's, like, what's keeping everything warm, mm -hmm. right? And so the furthest places away from that pumping... Can't and, go all and the, the way out there. Warm, Can't take the trip. Just imagine, like, uh, imagine anything. Um, if you're If you're cooking food... It's the outside. We'll get the heat first or cold first. Let's move on. <laughs> I don't really know anything about thermodynamics. I was Susan B. Anthony. Have, has everyone forgotten her? I know the name. And so I guess, yes. Like, I feel like that's a household name. Susan B. Anthony. She she has the coin. The who? Coin. She has the coin? Yeah, like the $2 coin or something. So she's on money? Yeah. There's a woman on money? Susan B. Anthony. I, yeah. What does she do? She didn't take the first flight across the atlantic did she no um i don't know oh my god you don't know who susan b anthony is <clears throat> no why don't i know who who it is we learned it in school susan b anthony should i look it up yeah at this point you gotta look it up. i'll tell other holidays other, yeah, okay. other quick holidays it's, it's march it's 18th for, oh good march um, 18th yeah it is national sloppy joe day that's i don't really like sloppy joes but i, I would eat a sloppy joe right now why I don't like sloppy joes is because I feel like it's all, it's like a, a poor man's pulled pork sandwich. And, man, I love pulled pork sandwich. I feel like I should roll my sleeves up. And <laughs> I love me some pulled pork sandwiches. Yeah. It's also national um, forgive your mom and dad day. Oh. I mean, a lot of people uh, sometimes hold on to things from their mom and dad. And we talk about forgiveness on this Christian podcast. And what is the power of forgiveness? It's the peace that you get in with yourself. It's very easy to hold on to something. It's hard to forgive. Right. But forgiving, forgiving is letting yourself out. You know, uh, when you always get surprised by this person who like forgives the person on the on the court stand. You know yeah, what I mean? Of it's like, and it's like after all the terrible things he did, you were yeah. able to forgive him. My comparison is in a way that person is, is locked up, and you are not putting yourself in a right. cell of hatred and and remorse. I'm freeing myself. I forgive you. And I, now I'm free of the burden that you carry. And it's, right. it's freeing in a way. Right. So you're more free. That's my little thought. Free uh, and more free. Susan B. Anthony. Yes. Um, we should have we should have talked about her on March 13th. Is that her birthday? Five days ago. It was her death day. 
I don't like talking about people. All right, like well, death we death should death. have talked about her on February 15th then. Birthday? Yeah. Okay. She was an American social reformer and w- women's rights activist who played a pivotal role in the women's suffrage movement. Mm, oh, Susan um, B. Anthony. She was committed to social equality and she collected anti slavery petitions at the age of 17. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, so she is important. Look, I feel like I don't even remember learning about her, but I feel like I just know the name. I just remember when the coin popped up. Oh, um, Susan. Wait, why did you bring her? Uh, why was that your name today? Um, because I was going to be, <laughs> I was going to be Saint Francis of Rome, which is a woman. Uh, okay. And again, with the dates, for some reason, I thought she was relevant to today, but she's not. Her feast day was March 9th. Wow, you really, you really pounded in. It's on a the full reef. moon. Is it? I was noticing a little wacky stuff going on. So was I, because I was in a hospital, and that's where you notice it really strongly. Oh yeah, you know yeah. what? Uh, my uncle. He is, works as a respiratory therapist, has worked for years, and just numerically, like, don't even say, oh, we're saying weird things are coming in, like, is subjective. Yeah. Like, was it weird or are you just looking for it on a full moon? Just numerically, more people are ending up in the, end up in the emergency room yeah. on a full moon night yeah. opposed to other nights. Babies are born. All, all sorts of things happen it's to us. kind of weird, man. So, I was confused. You know, this, yeah, this vest kind of makes me feel like a, a conspiracy theorist. Yes. Really, I'm like talking sure. ready to talk about aliens. Like a prepper. Yeah. You got a basement full of canned goods. <laughs> yeah. um, um, so St. Francis. Of Rome. Of Rome. Not to be confused with the St. Francis of the Sistine. There's a few Francis. There was. We talked was St. Francis of Xavier. Fran- St. Francis of Xavier. And St. Francis of Assisi. There was a, a woman, St. Francis too, I believe that we, she took her name after St. Francis Xavier. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is another woman, St. Francis of Rome. She, she founded the... Um, oblates of mary uh she was founded of a uh convent you know religious order for nuns and um she is one of not many she was she was married so she she was a widow she wanted to be a nun but she became a nun after she her husband died Mm. even though she acted like a nun meaning like all charitable she started the order before he died okay he was very supportive um and so the thing to remember about St. Francis of Rome is she was betrothed to a man to get married. And she did not want to get married. She wanted to be a nun. Oh, this was her husband who ended up passing away. Yeah. So she was betrothed. Wait, betrothed means what? Just means promised. What I'm saying, I guess, is was it arranged? Is yeah. what you're saying? Yeah, she arranged. was only 14 or 12 okay. or something. Okay. Yeah. She, she was like, guess what? She said to her, she, to her father, like, I'm going to be a nun. And he was like, no, you're not. Like, you're, you're going to. You're getting married. And she was like, came from a good family. They were going to. She married. Two good um, families. Two good families. She didn't want to be. And she 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 rebelled so much. She got very sick and almost died. Mm. Um, But she would have visions. And um, St. Alexis. St. Alexis came to, um, to her in a vision and said, stop it. <laughs> Get up. Stop. Stop. Trying to not get married. I think she was married at that point. Stop. Stop resisting the road God has for you. Oh. Yeah. And so she said, I want to be a good person and do good works. I want to be a and, nun. And now my life veered. And it's like, your life is still on path. Right. Like, don't let this think that now your purpose is. Right. Okay. Right. And she also had a spiritual advisor who, t- who told her, uh, you know, that they said she was crying before she got married. And he said, are you crying because you want to do God's will or are you crying because God's will is not lining up with your will? Oh, ooh, I like that. So that's good. I, who's a spiritual advisor? <laughs> what, what's his name? I know. So it's good to remember. So she she thought the best thing that she could ever do is be a nun. And, and the plan was, no, you're going to um, get married. And. In the marriage, she did so many. It was like yeah. um, Queen Esther, you know, so yeah. many good things for all the people. And um, and like I said, he he died, and then she actually did join her own order. But um, that was her. And it's it's not for today. But so I was confused. Oh right, so then it's for any day. Uh, well, yeah. why, why can't we talk about good good story Friday? We should have a good story Friday. All like our about, all our days are good. No, I'm saying like uh, you know how people. Talk like bad story. You used to have the yeah. bad story of the day. Yeah. Um, where you just tell a bad story of the day. We like on Fridays. You should just like current politically. Yeah. Usually do a little digging. Yeah. Good there's some Friday. accounts like that on Instagram that oh, I like. Right. Yeah. And yeah, you can find on the internet for people who really don't want to hear all the bad stories. I think John Krasinski, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, in the very beginning of COVID, 
like it was we were all sheltered in place mm-hmm. he came out with a youtube channel that was like it would every week or what it would come out with like just five minute videos that were just good news like in all this bad news here's some good news that was pretty cool perfect um, now before you continue i feel like we're a mess we're 10 minutes in the podcast for lent you're adding a hat every time yes. that there's a new podcast so you were at eight last time yeah, yeah it looks like you're wearing one i'm wearing nine um and while you're reading i'll sh- i'll reveal the 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 eight that are under this okay so it's- i'm not even counting the headscarf as a, as a hat so there's eight hats under here and this is the ninth because so- today's our ninth lenten podcast okay so it's uh it's a little bit of a russian nesting doll under there it is it's also yeah. a little hack <laughs> yeah you're, you're a, little hat a, hack. a little loophole i mean <laughs> <laughs> that's all right when i was vegan for lent one year i was eating cheesesteaks but they're vegan cheesesteaks you gotta find the loopholes you have to find loopholes and i'll see i'll see what happens for the 10th hat um but the road i was going on yesterday i couldn't hear yeah and it was it was, uh, was kind of tight I, I i can't imagine you would have made it to the end of of lent had you... we weren't even halfway there yet no no yeah. we can't we counted the weeks and you were going to end up with uh 18 hats no tw- 20 20 20 21 21 yeah so you you weren't even you weren't even halfway no well anyway guys i'm only wearing one hat and now i'm wearing no hat oh got a haircut got a haircut a little bit of a haircut my brother did it for me um <sighs> today's a special day yes. not just because it's friday no not just because it's sloppy joe day no i not because it's forgive your mom and dad day all those reasons are why it's a good day but more importantly it is dr seuss friday now you missed the last Doctor Seuss Friday. Did. did you get a chance to rewatch the episode? Of course I did. I always rewatch. And and I read comments. And um, the book we read. Oh wait, I'll talk about what Doctor Seuss Friday is first, right? Doctor Seuss Friday is a day where we find a Doctor Seuss book and we read it. Some might ask, "What is this? A children's channel? Should I bring my kid over and have him listen?" You can do that, but that's not what it's about. Doctor Seuss, smart guy, wrote these books for kids. But it wasn't all one, two, threes, ABCs, Sesame Street. There's some deeper meanings in these quirky words and rhymes. And although they might be subtle, isn't that, or it might be like, you know, some, like uh, general knowledge, like, oh, be kind. These are things that we can use as an adult. And so we use our big adult brains that are super and powerful. And we go back and we read a Dr. Seuss book and we try to get a meaning from it. Yes. And... It's tried and true. It's not like this is we we we've gone through how many? Probably 12. So many, yeah. I don't 12, 12 books and every time we Maybe walk more. we walk away with a message to walk away from. So come join us on our expedition. So today and for the past 3 weeks we have been reading out of this book. This book looks like one, but it's four Dr. Seuss books. It's called Horton and the Quagger Bug and More Lost Stories. And so, Dr. Seuss, everything he wrote wasn't published to be printed as books. Okay. He also worked for magazines where he wrote books. Once the magazines were sold, it's not like those books then still sell. It's the magazines right. are gone. This person went and found some of these lost stories and printed it in one big book. So, we've been going through it. Luckily, it's a gift that keeps on giving. And it came at a perfect time because... Um, for the past two weeks, I didn't. Bu- I didn't get a book oh, last week or this. Yeah, week. you didn't have to yeah. be running to Barnes and Noble every right, day because I wasn't here. So now, what I was saying earlier was, did you get a chance to watch the Marco Comes Late podcast? Yes. Did you? How did you feel about the book? Loved it. Yeah, you kind of remind me of Marco a little bit. Me? Yeah, I, I could see you. <laughs> see you giving that that little false story. storyteller. If you don't, if you, if you don't know, you can go check out Marco Comes Late. It's our. It was me and Avalon. Right. My sister, a little different. You were in the hospital. Today, visiting, not being not treated. being treated. Probably, maybe it would have done you some good. Oh. <laughs> Go to the psychiatric ward. So today we're reading how Officer Pat saved the whole town. All right, mom. Uh, little back in the blue there. We 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 um were interested <laughs> in to see what it'll be. It doesn't matter his his Profe- occupation no. profession rather. Well, yeah. We talked about this earlier, but why not just reiterate? You know, everyone gets mad at um, different things. Like, I'm not even going to point out police officers. Like, sometimes you get, you associate people with things. And something I always tell myself is, don't, it's not the same as defending actions of wrong things. I will, you should always fight against injustice. Mm-hmm. But on a person to person level, 
uh, a Bible recommendation to look at would be the tax collector. Yeah. Who was hated. Right. A lot of them were corrupt. To re- like, you're stealing all my money. And Jesus said, was friends with them. Was like, why are you friends with them? Right. It's like, well, they're, they're people. And, and so it was the kindness that made them follow Jesus. And so, like I said, I'm, I'm not, uh, I will always be against injustice. I will never be against human beings, okay. if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I just saw um, a post and it had, I, I don't stand with Ukraine. I don't stand with Russia. I don't stand with um, Palestine. I don't stand with Israel. I was just posted these things. Yeah. And at the bottom it said, I stand for all the people who live in all the countries of the world. You see, I did see that. You didn't I like it. I was kind of against it. Why? I personally, and you know, this is subjective, saw it as sort of an all lives matter kind of thing. Oh, okay. And so if you did, like, you, there is sort of a, a sense of, okay, I love that you love everyone in every country, but Ukrainians are being disproportionately killed right now. <laughs> and so it kind of takes a mental yeah choice because i just feel bad for russian people who are against putin because um i i have in my country yeah we've had leaders that i didn't agree with what they were doing but people thought as an american that i stood for what they stood for and uh i i completely agree and you see even some of the soldiers who are throwing down their their guns it's like their kids that they're i don't want to be here it's very sad but it's um it's one of those things where it's like you, I also feel bad for the police officers that say I don't believe in right. corruption, and and I think two things can happen. You can say I. Stand. If I look like I'm, if I keep having visions myself, it's because your screensaver behind you, which is out of out of camera range, I'll is extremely <laughs> mesmerizing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, um, that's enough of. of yeah, go. That. Let's start reading. Go. How Officer Pat saved the whole town. The job of Officer Pat. Ooh, let me, Take two. The job of an officer of the police is watching for trouble and keeping the peace. He has to be sharp and he has to be smart and try to stop trouble before it can start. And that's why one morning while out on his beat on the corner of Chestnut and Mulberry Street, he got sort of worried, did Officer Pat, when his very keen eyes spied a very small gnat going buzz round the head of old Thomas the Cat. Aha, murmured Pat. I see trouble in that. If that gnat bites that cat, and he might very well, the cat will wake up and he'll let out a yell. That's only small trouble, I know it, but brother, one small bit of trouble will lead to another. The trouble with trouble is trouble will spread. The yowl of that cat will make Tom, Tim, and Ted. Will wake Tom, Tim, and Ted. Those terrible triplets of Miss McGown, and they'll yowl a yowl that will make that will wake this whole town. <laughs> When trouble gets started, it always starts more. Those kids with their racket and ruckus and roar will frighten the birds and the birds will become flapping down Mulberry Street with a yipping and yapping. Once trouble gets going, it spreads just like fire. Those birds will come screaming towards Mr. McGuire, the fish market man, and they'll get such a scare. He'll toss that big codfish up high in the air. That's the trouble with trouble. It grows and it grows. The fish in the air will land smack on the nose of that horse over there that belongs to Bill Hart. The horses will start kicking, hearts wagging apart. And pumpkins will bounce on the head of Jake Warner, who's fixing that hydrant down there on the corner. And once all those pumpkins start falling on Jake, he'll fall on his wrench and the hydrant will break. There's no stopping trouble once trouble gets going. When hydrants get broken, the water starts flowing. The water will gush right on Miss Manella. She thinks it's rain and will put up her umbrella. And that'll knock young Bobby Burke off his bike. He'll fall on the ladder of house painter Mike. And house painter Mike, when he tumbles, will spill a bucket of paint on the head of Don Dill. Oh, once it gets started, there's no stopping trouble. That splashing of paint will upset Mrs. Hubble. She'll drop all her dishes. They'll smash on the ground. And startle her dog, and the poor frightened hound will jump in the horn of the ho- old horn tutor Fritz. And Fritz will fall backwards and scare driver Schmitz on his dynamite truck almost out of his wits. And that dynamite truck with its big load of blitz will race towards that tree. And oh boy, when it hits, the whole of this town will be blown to small bits. 
But lucky for us, down on Mulberry Street, good Officer Pat was awake on his beat, and quick the brave officer swung his big bat on the troublesome head of the troublesome gnat, and kept him from biting old Thomas the cat, and stopped all the trouble before it began. He saved the town. What a very smart man. Interesting. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Seuss. <laughs> I am interested in this book. I broke the string on my hat. Oh, did you? So I hope it doesn't fall off, but I think I'll be fine. Um, go ahead. Tell me. Normally, you know, you get like, how do I put this? It strikes me that he uh, he shouldn't have thought that much into it. Like, it, 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 in the beginning, I'm like, I was like trying to equate it when it was like a small thing of like, yeah. oh, you never know how things spiral out of control. But for me, it's almost like his mind spiraled out of control. Yes, I agree. I, I feel like you shouldn't think like Officer Pat. I agree. In, okay. in like, in modern day you know, mental health. Yeah. Advice. Catastrophic thinking. Yeah. You know, if, if slippery slope, we talked about if that happens. Um, so, but I'm kind of torn because, um, was it, um, I wrote, was it an overreaction or was it seeking to pull out the root, not the root so much or like, um, the spark. So like, you know how forest fires rage out of control because of a spark. Oh, like a like a uh, butterfly effect. Yeah, like a drop in the a drop in the water. Right. So is it is it trying to snuff out the spark or was it an overreaction? I'll just say um, one Bible verse. It's Isaiah fifty seven twenty, and it says, "But the wicked are like the tossing sea, for it cannot be quiet, and its waters toss up refuse and mud." Um, a few times in that story, it said trouble makes trouble, trouble makes trouble, trouble yeah. makes trouble. And um, so that Bible verse, yeah, you know, if it's true that, you know, you want to keep, you want to keep everybody, just think of like a farmer, you know, trying to keep all the animals happy <laughs> yeah. and healthy and safe and, and um take jumping on problems as soon as they start because of experience and knowing where it will lead yeah or yeah or or we back to saying it was an overreaction <laughs> that, that's like like before like, i'm even <laughs> jumping into it it's because i can i can go on a tangent about both like yeah i i, I like to you know snuff it out before it starts because it's like you hold yourself accountable and it, it's easy to say ah what's gonna happen and it's like things can compound and trouble you know it does make trouble it's like yeah oh this one time is fine um, but I think I'm going to lean more towards the other side and okay. with my, with my views of, of life. Uh, I think a lot of, you know, people even in Christendom see things like officer Pat. And I think we're always talking against that. Of, right. On yesterday's podcast, um, it was St. Patty's day and you were saying, should good spiritual Christians go to bar crawls? You right. were, you were being... Um, it wasn't an actual, yeah. you're mm-hmm. being facetious. It wasn't an actual question, but that you, like, you could make that the net. And it's like, but trouble makes trouble. Right. If you're at a bar crawl, there'll be drinking. If there's drinking, you lose inhibition. Right. If you lose inhibition, you'll get into a fight. If you get into a fight, you'll get arrested. And it's like that, that, that kind of thinking is right. it, like the, um, Swiss cheese effect. Yeah. Swiss cheese model. Swiss cheese model. Swiss cheese model. Yeah. It would, ha- everything would have to line it's, up. It's possible, but not probable. Yeah. And um, so I, I think it's very easy to find ourselves in these situations because it also feel like I feel like it makes you feel like things can't be undone. Yeah. Like once tr- trouble makes trouble. One, if, if, if I do one thing wrong, if I slip up, then you, we get this such a I feel like a scared. We, um, you know, we always talk about what does it really mean to fear God? I feel like it turns into more of a fear of like, well, yeah. this is only like, I, I need to be perfect. I need right, to be perfect. Right. And it's like we weren't made to be perfect and, mm-hmm. and we weren't made to shield our eyes from any earthly pleasure or right. any little bit now is there like once again like is there a difference of not have of catastrophic thinking and ah who cares i'll do whatever right. i want there is and and yeah officer pat you know there is like things that can be done but i think it should never spiral out of control even if it's just the gnat will wake up the cat and it's like 
Uh, but to get in that that hole of it's very easy for us to do of like, but then this will happen, but then this right. will happen, but then this will happen, and it's very hard to get people out of those loops. Right. It's like you'll just have to see, and and there's a peace and there's a leaning on God that to not be so catastrophically yes. thinking. Yes. And I will say as well, at the end of the book, it says, Officer Pat saved the whole town. And I guess I would also, I would refrain from letting people tell other people that, like, let the person make up their mind, right? Yeah. So, like, if you say that this this saint or priest or pastor or teacher or president saved you because because of those, and fill in the blank, because of those sanctions, because of the dress code, because yeah. of the curfew... He saved us from total, he or she, they, they saved us from total ruin. Don't tell me what. Don't tell me. (laughs) Don't tell me. Who saved who. And my nine hats. (laughs) Don't tell me that, that, again, that is one scenario, but you can't just make that statement. I I, I like, I like where your head's at. Um, We always. It's under here. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know where your head's at, but I, I like it. Um. We oh um, yeah. We always talk about uh, you know, you, we literally you're not meant to judge. Like right. they said over and over, take the uh, log out of your own eye before the speck out of another person. And the counter argument, which is frustrating, that we will sometimes hear is, I'm not judge or I'm not judging them. I am correcting them because I love them. I want them to be saved. Right. And it's like you're you're doing it for someone else. And right. Is that not kind of what Officer Pat is like? Oh, I saved the whole town because he's worried. Oh, I'm 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 doing this because I'm trying to save you. And it's like you don't even know that all those things are going to happen. It, it's, right. It's not your job to let all that worry go into everyone else. Like right. if I don't do this, and isn't that kind of like a little bit OCD? Um, not yeah, to bring I was up thinking mental. That. <laughs> no, no, we're not. We're not here to diagnose anything mentally, but the idea of yeah. If I don't care, if I don't you know touch this this lamp three times, the world's gonna right. end. Is obviously a very, um, uh, what's a word when it's like stereo stereotypical? Like yeah, I know what you're OCD saying. OCD is a lot more complex, yeah. but that idea of this will turn into that, and so mm-hmm. therefore I need to do this. I, I, he was staring at. There was no trouble in the town. He was saying, but right? Like, but that gnat. But that I need to kill that gnat. If I don't kill that gnat, then this basically right. everyone in town is gonna die. And it was super. It was super um, dramatic. The, mm-hmm. the the bat to kill the gnat. I think he said took so he took the biggest bat and he gave it the biggest whack. It's yeah. like that's a lot. Um, probably just bring it down. Yeah, <laughs> bring your energy down a bunch bring it down. and don't let your fear yes um, become a belief. Yes, I think I think that's a a good point. A uh, fear. Th- yeah. This this had this said sometimes we feel like we need to do something out of fear, and it's like right. there is that peace and that yeah. leaning on God that. Okay, like things things will happen the way they're meant to happen. It's not always right, like you said, putting yourself above all these other people. Like it's up to me. It's yeah. up to me. It's like have peace. I, I, yeah. If anything, give give your like give your worries to God and say, yeah, I'm worried. About, I'm I'm too worried. I'm too anxious that all these things are going to compile. Yeah, but, um, like you know, driving. They always tell you don't overcorrect. Mm-hmm. So if you see something, you want to like get out of the way. Yeah, you don't want to. Chances. Um <laughs> so even if even if this um this person who was observing the gnat, maybe they would say, Hey, I want to keep a l I want to keep an eye on it. Yeah. Maybe these things will happen. Let me see what happens. But to to be convinced this is no. what will happen, I need to kill the gnat. Because even if he watched the gnat and the gnat did make the cat yowl, he, couldn't he have stopped things yeah. then? Yeah. It was like, no, this this is the only thing I'll ever be able to stop. Yeah, maybe maybe this, it was this small. is trouble and trouble makes trouble. Like it yeah. was like I just know this is gonna get worse. Right. And it's like you don't know that. Right. Have peace. But we all we love peace. Yeah. Put your put your fears onto God and let him comfort you and all that. Oh wait, you said it's um sloppy Joe. It's it's fish Friday. Oh You're gonna have to have tuna fish Joe. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh fish friday if you already had meat have i had meat yet nope good i'm good good you get to go to heaven <laughs> <laughs> if i have meat then i will the trouble just makes trouble that's right that's right <laughs> my whole family would die if i eat meat today no joking that is dr seuss friday hope you enjoyed it 
I enjoyed it. On top of everything, I got to wear a vest for the whole time. You did. Um, <laughs> vestments. You're a priest. You're wearing vestments. Uh, this this <laughs> this vest wasn't a good good investment. I'll tell you that much. Um, um, we'll be back next week for One Word Wednesday, and as t- always. Ten hats. Ten hats. Are you going to switch it up completely? Or are you kind of liking this? Tune in and see. Tune in and see. There's only one way to find out. Check out Crook and Crow. Like, subscribe, and share, and comment down below what... Uh, I would say what the next Dr. Seuss book you want us to read is, but technically we have one more in old Horton and the Quagger Bug and more lost stories. That's all for us. Peace, love, and prosperity. I love you. Go tell your mom and dad that you apologize. Or no, you forgive them. <laughs>